I'm Jennifer Lee, admin evangelist, and this is how I solved it. Ever run into a situation where you need to automate on a schedule, but only when the value in the field has changed? Michael Kalaner tackles that challenge and came up with a creative solution to that problem with help from the community. Today, I have a returning guest, Salesforce MVP and independent nonprofit Salesforce consultant, Michael Kalotner, on today's episode. Welcome back, Michael. Thanks, Jen. It's great to be back. So for those who didn't watch your previous episodes with us, can you share with us um, your Salesforce journey? Sure. Um, like many others, I'm an accidental admin. Um, almost 10 years ago now, I, I um, got back into the workforce after being a stay-at-home dad, and the organization I was working for needed CRM, and I was given the task of looking at the options, and this Salesforce thing sounded good to me. <laughs> so we implemented with the help of a partner, and I really started to enjoy playing with Salesforce, got involved in the community, was really blown away by how generous people, particularly in the online nonprofit community were with their time and their wisdom. And so I got involved in the Power of Us hub. I got more and more involved in Salesforce. And eventually I decided I wanted to find a job where Salesforce was my full-time job mm -hmm. and moved to a nonprofit where I was a solo admin. And then um, almost three years ago now, I became an independent consultant working with nonprofits. Super cool. So I understand that you're a blogger. Tell me more about uh, free, like a puppy dot tech. Like, first of all, where did you even come up with the name and how did people find your blog? <laughs> so the name comes from a lot of nonprofit people refer to Salesforce as being free like a puppy, not free like a beer. <laughs> um, and I truly believe it. And so early this year, I had an idea for a whole bunch of posts I wanted to publish somewhere for nonprofits to think about whether Salesforce is right for them, what they should plan for, the kinds of challenges that my clients often face, um, but also for those who aren't yet ready to be my client or someone else's client. And it, it sort of came to me at, at some point that um, I like the name Free Like a Puppy and it mm -hmm. would allow me to have great artwork and a character freebie the puppy um, <laughs> who could illustrate my blog posts and so i got it started earlier this year super cool so i'm a, a fellow blogger as well and unfortunately it seems like we're a pretty rare breed these days so what motivates you to blog and how do you come up with your content ideas that's a great question um i really enjoy writing and sharing what i have learned and, you know, something like, you know, the admins blog is a great place for me to post how I solve this type articles where it's technical and it's a thing I did. But I had, I still have lots more that I want to say that is sort of outside the niche of the admins blog or some other how to type of content. And after thinking about where I could sort of guest publish frequently, Eventually, I said, you know what, I think I have enough that I have to say that I would like to start my own thing. It would be fun to have illustrations and make it my um, persona. And so I, that's why I started doing it. I definitely had a list of topic ideas at first that allowed me to just sort of publish every week or two. Mm -hmm. It has gotten more challenging and I have to remind myself to come up with something and to sit down and write it. Um, but there's endless corners of Salesforce to explore and to talk about in the nonprofit context. So I'm, I have not yet run out of things to say. Um, what type of advice do you have for someone who is looking to get started in the Salesforce ecosystem or specifically like nonprofit? Sure. Um, my first advice is, you know, just dive in. I love Trailhead. Um, I'm a total trailhead addict. I really do believe you can learn everything you need to get started in your Salesforce career on trailhead. So I always point people there. And then, you know, every Salesforce admin superpower is the community. Get involved in the, in the trailblazer community. You will find, as I said, people who are incredibly generous with their time and their wisdom. 
um, you know, who will just say, let's jump on the phone or on a Zoom call, let's solve that together. And I believe in paying it forward. Um, so I'm now the one getting to do that and share that with people. I think it's a it's it's a really great ecosystem to be able to get into. And I think it's pretty easy to find your place. Um, in terms of nonprofits, you know, there has been floating out there the idea of volunteering to work on this nonprofit Salesforce instance. And I really do caution people to please don't do that. Um, you may build things that they can't maintain or that they don't understand or that you've built wrong. It's my bread and butter to go in and fix those things at this point in my career, but I'd rather that the organizations didn't have that. So please make sure if you're going to volunteer for a nonprofit, you know what you're doing and what they're ready for, and you give them a solution that fits their industry because it's pretty specific. It's not just, you know, the same as a sales cloud instance, but in an organization that doesn't make money. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. I've also heard people um, recommend instead of volunteering as a nonprofit, a nonprofit as your first thing um, is to, you know, pick a hobby that you want to use Salesforce for and then like build that thing in Salesforce and then show, use that to showcase to your uh, future employers. I think that's great. And that can be so much fun. Um, I, it's not something I ever like came up with an idea I really wanted to build, but I have definitely seen examples of people who, you know, built something really neat that is either, even if it's not necessarily useful to them, it's the kind of thing that could have a useful um, case. And I think that's really cool when you can see that. That's why I love Trailhead is the hands-on nature of all those admin challenges. I love the fact that you can build something and have your work checked. And it's the same thing if you can build something and show it to a potential employer, that's you know worth way more than a thousand words. Right. Right? Yeah. All right. So um, let's jump into things. So share with us the business problem that you were trying to solve for. Sure. I have a client called the Modern Classrooms Project. They're a, they're a wonderful organization. They work with teachers to teach them to reorganize their classroom to be self-paced and mastery-based learning. So what that means is that the students are watching videos and working on um, you know, worksheets and quizzes and they move at their own pace and the teacher can work with them in an individualized way. So they have a mentorship program where teachers are matched with a mentor and taught how to use this program. Modern Classrooms is enrolling hundreds of teachers per session right now, or thousands, I think, right now, and they want to scale up to tens of thousands. So they're working to bring their um, everything's on a spreadsheet system into Salesforce. I've been working with them to do this over the past 18 months or so. And one of the things they want to automate is the email journey when you register. Or in this case, when you apply through a partnership, if your school or your district has contracted for, you know, 50 seats, then 50 teachers can sign up and some administrator at the district is going to determine, you know, these are the teachers who we're going to say yes to. Maybe we have to wait list the others, et cetera. So we built this portion of this flow down here where we send them the right email based on whether they've been accepted or waitlisted into the program. Just right after we built this, um, the requirement changed a little and someone decided that when the administrator hits submit on that web, web form that they're using to accept or reject candidates, we don't, we don't want to email right away. We want to give people at least some time for the administrator to change their mind or realize they clicked on the wrong person or whatever might have changed. So we wanted to tell them they could have a two hour delay. Easy peasy, we thought. We're just gonna take all this stuff that was on the run immediately path and we're gonna move it to a scheduled path that waits two hours. What I didn't realize when we first started building it was we're not gonna be able to kick off that scheduled path based on is changed for the status field on the campaign member. 
So I had to find another way to solve that. And this is where I wanted to show my how I solved it. So after asking for some help in the community and thinking about this a bit, um, I came upon the solution of putting a switch on the campaign member record, which would then allow us to run this flow based on whether the switch was in the setting to send or not to send. And the switch is very simple. It's a field on campaign member. It's a pick list field with send or do not send as the options. I could have made it a checkbox, but I have this feeling that there may be some other statuses we end up needing in the future. And also I find checkboxes, sometimes you don't know if it has been not set as opposed to intentionally left unchecked. So yes, I like the pick list. Same, <laughs> same here. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid of that. So I went with the pick list. And then I put another flow into this org. This is a very fast, very simple, before save or fast field update record triggered flow. Basically, if the status is changed, it sets the email switch to send. Could not be a simpler flow than that. And since that's before save, it runs super fast. And now whenever the campaign member gets changed, the status gets changed, my switch is gonna be set to on. And now we just head right back into this same exact flow, but this flow now waits two hours and then it runs through this decision that says, was the email switch set to send? If so, we go through which of the proper conditions and send the right email. So it's very simple, but it's doing this very complicated thing that we couldn't do on a delayed portion of the flow, which is check is changed. And by the way, it looks like you can, you know, you can't make it your start condition for the um, delayed portion. You can't choose is changed at all, but you can build a decision element in which you put is changed in the conditions. It just won't work. It will save, it will activate, but it will not do what you want it to do. We found that out the hard way in testing, which is when we realized we needed this before save trigger and the switch to work the way that we needed it to work. And that's how I solved it. Great. I I love how you don't find things out until you test. So <laughs> PSA, test, test, test before you put it in production. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, Michael, for coming back on How I Solved It and showing us this really creative workaround that you got from the community of all places, right? The community is so awesome. Um, and uh, this workaround to schedule a process to run only when the field has changed using Flow. So again, thank you for coming back. And I'm looking forward for you to come back again and again and again. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. It's great to be back. I've loved working on this series and it's so much fun to do it with you. You just saw how Michael Kalodner came up with a nifty workaround to running a scheduled path when a field value changes. Way to put those creative skills to work. You can always find videos like this at admin.salesforce.com and also by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Salesforce Admins, so you will never miss another episode of How I Solved It. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Awesome.